Um, I also, back to my son, at the same site had found some crinoids because he was a little better looking than I was. Uh, a little wash down gully, you know, coming down a road cut. He was down at the bottom. He said, Dad, Dad, I found some crinoids. So I look and we start looking. We follow that gully up and all the way up that gully were little crinoids. And so over time, repetition, visit after visit after visit, I kept going back to that gully and start to bottom and work my way to the top. All these little crinoids. And uh, finally, on one occasion, found the layer up here that they were coming from. And uh, I managed to somehow pull a uh, chunk of rock about two feet this way and a foot wide with this much shale on it out of there. And I didn't mess with it. I took it home. And I wet screened that material and had, uh, I think it was close to 200 crinoids on that one slab that came out of the shale loose, including one that was about two millimeters high cup of a crime that was two millimeters high. So it takes some effort and some time to do that. And uh, I'll give you a little, a little bit of the technique. Again, I've, I've kind of gone to the extreme. Not everybody does. Depends on how serious you are about this. Um, approaching a road cut. This is my, this is my rendition of a road cut. Just straight on at it. There's the road. And here's, uh, here's the road cut. And you've got you know, all these layers you know, that you can see. If I go to a place like this, especially if I haven't been there before, you don't know what's where. And of course, gravity always brings stuff down. Uh, so you pick a place to start, start at one end, we'll say, start here, and you work your way up, straight up, all the way to the top. See what you can find. And then it's, what I do then is once I'm at the top, I back down the same pathway. Now when I'm going up, I'm looking left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, you know, about like that. Go back down here, then I move over to the next spot and do the same thing. And the reason I do that is if I was to go up here, move over, and go down and look, I'd be walking on everything I wanted to collect. So you go back down where you've already walked, then go over, then go up in a fresh area and do the same thing. And you can work the whole road cut like that. And if you've got more experience, as you come back and you say, well, I know, you know, that there's a trilobite layer right here, then you can kind of go to that layer. And you will also, because of the gravity, maybe you'll find trilobites here that have, you know, full of erosion or rain drifted down. And you kind of look, follow it back up to try to find that layer, that hot layer. As a matter of fact, the, the collecting site tomorrow has two hot layers for trilobites. And after we're off camera, we might reveal to you where those are. Uh, so anyway, this is the technique I use. It's a little hard to do on a field trip because everybody's you know around, but um, people are all over the place. One of the one of the most rewarding things you'll have is if you're a driver at your field trip and you're, you're looking around. And here's a place where somebody's walked all over it, and you find a trial bike right in their footprint. That's 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 a reward. That's a real reward because you are a better collector than the guy was just walking around looking like I see so many people doing this. And you really need to be crawling around on the ground. In previous talks, I've jumped up here and gotten to that position, but uh, we're not doing that now. We're not doing that any longer. So let's see if I covered everything. And I was teasing about you absolutely have to have all this stuff. You don't have to. Again, it depends on you know your level of seriousness and how, how nutty you are about wanting to find everything in the world. But personally, when I collect, I collect everything I find in that that pattern. I'm not, there are some people who go to look for trial lights and that's it. They don't pick up anything else. And so we were talking about before. Um, I like to look at everything because I want to know, I always want to know what was living at this time, what lived together, you know, what was it like, what was the environment like. And so you, you collect everything. And you will also find sometimes uh, some of these sites that you want to pick up broken things, brachiopods. There are the, the Raphneskina brachiopod. Uh, which is kind of a D-shaped uh, brachiopod. You're looking down on the top of it, it's kind of shaped like this. Uh, a lot of new critters live on those things, attach themselves to there, including the, the eager asteroids, which are somewhat rare echinoderms in this area. So, you know, the eager that got on this brachiopod didn't know that uh, 450 million years later, this brachiopod was going to break, you know, and he's over here. So don't just pick up the whole ones. 
in our, uh, at least one of, the, one of the exposures over in Indiana is, is good for that. You pick up a lot of these broken ones and you'll find these things on them. So uh, not, pristine specimens aren't necessarily everything you want. You want to get some of the, uh, the crummy looking stuff too. So any questions on that or anything I might have missed? One thing I'd suggest for the kid that I've seen actually used over on Gore Hill when somebody slipped and cut the coal on a rock and a little first aid kit was banded out. Yeah. And we got that. Yeah, I got that. But um, it may need to be refreshed. Yeah, I have actually I've got some uh, canvas bags here that are not only muddy, they're bloody um, because of getting getting cut. Also, I was curious if you're trenching some stuff. Where's the handle? Uh, oh, this is cool. Let's see. He's like, where's the handle? Let's see if I can. Uh, it's been a while since this has been used, so let's see if we can make this happen. It's a James. It's a lot of army surplus and, uh, Some of them are actually surplus and some of them are. Yeah, of course not. I forgot how to get back into the thing. But anyway, um, this one's nice. It's got a, a plastic hard case for it. Some of them are, uh, the older ones are canvas. There are some trenching shovels that actually have a little wooden handle on them. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the folding ones are nice for that. You have a question? Yeah. Um, when you're wearing your pack, do you ever wonder if people think you're in the edge of <laughs> well, I have been mistaken for celebrities off the <laughs> Especially, you know, if you've got a cool hat, that's, you know, that's what it takes. You know, you got to have a cool hat. Some of us have been mistaken for real paleontologists, but uh, you can't get away without the ask for ID. So, any other? Yeah, Jack, two things. Do you carry any glue with you in saran wrap? Um, on one occasion, I did use glue, and I was somewhat sorry that I did. I had found uh, some crinoids kind of thing I really liked. They were layers of shale, and I was trying to get them out, you know, in place without it was all falling apart. And I used uh, what some of the trial light guys like is Elmer's glue and water. You dilute it, kind of paint it on. And I did that, and that did keep it together, because when the shale dries, it just breaks all apart. The problem came in the case that I had of trying to clean it back off. It was like gum, and I uh, couldn't get it off very well without having trouble. So I, I don't know what I mean. I should have probably used something different, um, a different material, like maybe they use on the dinosaur bones or something that's real fluid. Um, but um, what was it? Uh, it's mainly really a bond yeah. stuff, but that's yeah. Yeah, you have to be able to, to clean it because again, there are shale or a couple of mud. Some stuff comes off easy, some of it doesn't. And Rich is going to talk about cleaning, so I won't go any further down that road. Uh, saran wrap. Saran wrap, yeah. Uh, saran wrap uh, is useful, I know, when we go to the Mount Orb and dig trilobites. That's recommended there because the trilobites are in shale. If they're rolled up in a ball, they're usually very stable. But sometimes they're, they're flat, they're not rolled up. And when they're not rolled up and they're on shale, again, when that dries out, if it dries out too fast, that stuff will break apart and the trilobite breaks apart. So what people do is wrap it in saran wrap so that it dries out very slowly and then it won't crack. And that's what you're referring to, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not, I mean, I'll pick up a trial bite if it's in the way, but I prefer to be kind of nerves. So. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Oh, where do you buy the knee pads? Um, you can get them at like Home Depot or Lowe's. <coughs> that's where I've got them. I've got a number of, number of different you sets. Garden stores. Garden stores. Yeah, buy good ones with a lot of padding, you'd be surprised. And uh, the usual problem is they want to slip down you know, or keep adjusting them. But, uh, and then if you get a stone between the knee pad and your pants, uh, that's, a, that's a little bummer. But yeah, I've got different ones. This, these, are, these turned out to be the ones I use the most. I got some that are more robust, got a much thicker pad. They didn't work nearly as well. Because when I kneeled, kneeled down on a, or knelt down on an uneven surface, they kind of wanted to rock over. And it, So, um, if you have some more questions, I'll answer them. If not, let me put this away a little bit and give Rich some room because I know Rich needs more room to perform than I do. Uh, Rich. <laughs>
you know, we'll be given this, uh, this fossil shirt back to the middle. Jack, Jack, where can and where can't you collect fossils? Oh, very good.